Well, welcome everybody to our Silicon Valley Clean Energy Board of Directors meeting on Wednesday, May 10th at 7 p.m. And uh, let's get started with the call to order. Yes. Thank you, Chair. I will now call roll. I will begin with you, Chair Tyson. Here. Vice Chair Walia. Here. Director Scozola. Here. Director Mohan. Here. Director Meadows. Here. Director Rennie. Here. Director Makachuk. Present. Director Klein. Present. Uh, participating remotely, Director Hilton. Here. And I don't see Director Martinez Botron, Director Chua, Director Lee, and Director Abe Koga are absent, but we do have a quorum of the board. Very good. Thank you for that information. All right. I called it call to order, but I meant roll call, but I knew you know what I meant. Um, Let's move straight on to public comment, and this is for items not listed on the agenda, and the public may has this opportunity to provide comments. I won't read this whole statement here, but you have a time limit, and um, we'll see. Uh, first off, I do understand that we do have a member of the public who wishes to speak, and I invite you to, to come up to, this, uh, to the lectern, and we are delighted to hear from you. Thank you. Okay. Hello there. Um, dear SVCE members of the board, um, I come to you as someone who has tried to actually get a rebate from SVCE and thought I would give you the perspective of someone in the trenches. Thank you. Um, so I recently closed on a house and took possession of it on March the 1st. Uh, we had home inspections, but they missed that the existing water heater was 30 years old. It wasn't in great shape. It had leaks, corrosion, no drain pan, and a bunch of other issues. Uh, we decided to replace it. and. Uh, we had a new uh, heat pump water heater installed by the end of the month. Now, I will admit I would, that I was not aware of SVCE and their rebate programs. My first priority was to get a critical issue at my house fixed fast while also taking advantage of going green. When I did submit the paperwork, my reimbursement was denied as I had not followed the SVCE process. Next, please. Uh, now, here is the exact timeline. I signed the order on March 15th after I had received two quotes. The permit was pulled and the work was done. I then received the SVCE paperwork and submitted it a couple days later. The rebate application was approved. On the same day, the permit was closed, the invoice was paid, and the rebate paperwork was submitted. And on April the 13th, the rebate was denied as I had done this incorrectly in the wrong set of steps. So this leads me to a couple of questions. Is the intention to provide rebates to customers who go green, or is the intention to throw up complicated roadblocks and not actually issue rebates? What if the water heater had failed? By requiring SVCE to be the first call before any work is done would imply that you expect people to go without water or other critical utilities until SVCE deigns to approve their work. I understand the intent of not having someone file paperwork for an upgrade that has happened months or years apart. But as you can clearly see, there is very little time difference here and replacing, replacing the water heater was a critical item. Now, I honestly do not expect you to change your policies or to give me my rebate, even if it is probably the right thing to do. But I do want you to understand that I believe it is disingenuous to offer rebates if you have a set of draconian policies and arcane steps that you expect someone to follow to get a rebate, especially when they may be in crisis solving mode. I believe my time is up and thank you for letting me speak. Thank you very much for those comments, Mr. Corbett. And uh, I, I will say uh, that I appreciate the organization and clarity you provided in your presentation and the timeliness that allowed us to then pre present it uh, to all of the board members here. So thank you for that. I do believe that we have staff members who are willing to respond to those comments. And I'll, I'll hand this over to our CEO, Garish. Thank you. And I'll just repeat, thank you for providing your presentation a week in advance. It allows us to think about this. And board members, uh, I've talked to the gentleman and offered to meet with him uh, after this meeting, not tonight, but uh, so I hope to do that to learn both about his particular issue, but also about how we can fine tune our program because he brought up several issues outside of also what he dealt with. Um, so 
that's essentially what I want to say. This is public comment, so we're not going to solve the problem here. Mm -hmm. uh, I did have our Director of Decarbonization Policy and Programs, Justin Zagunas, would be happy to provide a few comments to you if you're interested. Otherwise, we'll follow up with the gentleman after the meeting. Uh, let, me, let me suggest that I think we're interested if Justin has something to say now. Okay, thank you. Um, may I ask one yes. question? Before? Turn on your microphone. May I ask one question before uh, Justin comes up? Um, did you apply for the certification rebate on the testing side? I'm not aware of a rebate on the testing side. I was only aware that there was a rebate for installing the heat pump water heater. There's a different rebate. I think it's for $150 or something like that because you had to get some testing or certification done when you put in your heat pump water heater. I was not aware of that, and I don't believe that has been filed. Okay. Okay. I, I will say most of this, I am only aware of it because my contractor said, hey, you should file for this. And I said, oh, okay, I'll go do that. Okay, I'm very interested in hearing from, from Justin, but okay. I'll follow up with you separately. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thanks. Good evening, board. Um, yeah, just wanted to share kind of a few thoughts um, in response to the public comment. I mean, echoing that we really appreciate getting public comment and, and customer feedback from people who have gone through our programs, other programs, and are trying to, you know, do the right thing, install these uh, technologies that we're trying to promote. So really appreciate that. So thank you. Um, you know, and, and at a staff level, we're really focused on trying to make our programs as successful as they can be for our customers, both in terms of, uh, you know, ease of process as well as uh, impact in decarbonizing. And so, you know, part of that is sort of the pre-work that we do in designing and thinking about programs. And part of it is once they go live, um, seeing how they, how they do, how do they perform? Where can we make improvements? Where are there additional roadblocks that we're kind of observing and seeing? And so... This is something we're constantly doing. We're looking at feedback we get via email, from conversations with customers directly, uh, looking at metrics that we track on program performance, surveys that we do, and we kind of accumulate all of this and we look to see where are their common pain points, where are their challenges that we really need to address and we can address through program design. So I wanted to assure you that, you know, we do take all of these comments and, and perspectives seriously and when we received, you know, and, and received kind of some emails from this gentleman and, and we're digging into the program, we, we have been spending some time thinking about, yeah, how can we make adjustments now, particularly, I think, for the uh, emergency water heater loaner replacement component. That's something that we know anecdotally we have had some folks who were able to go through our program as it exists today, even in a, an emergency situation. But we think there's an opportunity to make it even easier, particularly for kind of same day replacement or something like that. The other thing I just wanted to mention is kind of a broader program design comment, which is a lot of this is balance, right? I mean, there's things that we want to do with all our programs. We want to make it as easy as possible, uh, as simple as possible, as few steps as possible. And at the same time, there are other objectives in terms of validating uh, customer eligibility, validating equipment eligibility, um, being able to guarantee people who are relying on these rebates that, hey, in three months when you finish your work, the rebate will be there for you. And so that's kind of why we've set up the process we have today where it is a, a two-step process, but that's something we're, we're constantly thinking about and looking back on. So we will be meeting uh, directly with this gentleman as well, and as, as Grish said, and look forward to continuing to think how we can improve the process and, and the customer experience. Great, thank you, Justin. Any other comments? Um, I'm going to go on to see, do we have any other public comments uh, from people in the room? Uh, please step up here, Mr. Uh, Carney. Thanks. I didn't plan to speak tonight, but sometimes you just can't help yourself. Um, and particularly, I'd like to address Mr. Corbett's situation. I've been told um, that 95% of water heater replacements are not inspected, not permitted. And at least in Mountain View, I've also been told that it is not anticipated that someone would have a permit before the water heater is replaced because they are almost always emergency replacements. And so in Mountain View, what one is supposed to do 
is call the plumber, replace the water heater, get a permit, get an inspection. Um, and so I would encourage the board and staff to develop a policy, perhaps giving three months from the time of the installation of the heat pump water heater until the rebate paperwork is filed. I understand uh, you know, the comments Justin made about wanting to make sure you have enough money to um, you know, not disappoint anyone who files paperwork first and then does a replacement. But given the sad reality of how many water heater replacements are done on an emergency basis, it's, it's the corner case that somebody would proactively replace a working water heater with a heat pump. And you know, the faster we make these replacements, you know, the better the planet's health will be. So I do hope the board will um, work with staff and develop a policy that can be applied re retroactively in this particular case and perhaps for every other similar case if there are any in 2023. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Do we have any other public comments in the room? Seeing none, do we have any public comments online? No hands raised, Chair. And any other comments from board members? I do not see any. Oh, a welcome, Mar Director Martinez Beltran. Uh, with that, I will close the public comments uh, section and we will move straight on to the consent calendar. And do we have any uh, public comment on any of the items on the consent calendar? I do not see any in the room. None online, Chair. All right. In that case, let's bring it back to the, uh, to the board. Do we have any board members who wish to pull any items? I do not see any in the room. And I do not see any from the two that I see online. So then in that case, I'm looking for a motion. So moved to approve the consent calendar. Right. Vice Chair Walia, and then a second by, um, by Director Meadows. Let's go for a vote. Thank you. Chair Tyson. Yes. Vice Chair Walia. Yes. Director Scozola. Yes. Mohan. Yes. Meadows. Yes. Rennie? Aye. Mekachek? Aye. Klein? Yes. Hilton? Aye. Martinez Beltran? Aye. Thank you. That motion carries with Directors Chua, Lee, and Abe Koga absent. Great. Thank you. All right. We'll move on to the regular, cal uh, regular calendar. And item number two is our CEO report. Take it away. Thank you, Chair, Thank you, Chair Tyson. Uh, so I have a few updates. First, I'd like to. Uh, introduce two new employees. Last month, we introduced six new employees, now it's two, and we will be at 45 employees, I believe. So, and you've budgeted, you've approved budget for 49. So uh, I'd like to introduce Jesse Park, who I believe will be joining us online. And Jesse joined SBC on April 17th he works in Monica's group as a power data analyst. He'll be working for um, Zach. And he works on a number of projects, including data analysis, Kaiso market analysis. And he'll be working in the settlements area. He has quite a bit of experience. We're super happy that he's decided to join our team. And Jesse, would you please introduce yourself to the board? Oh, thank you, Garish. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Jesse Park. Um, my energy background uh, started in 2006 when I started with Shell Energy, and it's kind of led me this long journey over 17 years to SPCE, which I'm very happy to join. Um, my uh, my role here will be kind of like like you said, like in the settlements. Um, we have a lot of information that we get from a lot of different data points, and what I'm hoping to do is uh, be able to put that data together and be able to present it at a very high level and understandable level to everyone to share, to improve, to kind of manage our portfolio a much better. And um, I'm just looking forward to working here. I'm very, very excited. And thank you for your time. Thank you, Jesse. Uh, next new employee I'd like to introduce is with us today in person. Eric Shear, he joined SBC a week after Jesse, and he's joined Monica's group too. He's a senior power analyst, and he works for Charles Princeton. And 
he has spent time, as you can see in the CEO report, at DOE Solar Energy Innovators Programs, Enel, and as an independent consultant. So he has moved to the Bay Area recently. Eric, would you please introduce yourself? Thanks, Grish, and uh, nice to meet you, members of the board. Um, as Grish said, my name is Eric Shire, and I was most recently at the Department of Energy as a research fellow focused on how to solve energy poverty using distributed energy resources. And prior to that, I was at Enel North America helping manage their wholesale portfolio, which covers all of the competitive markets and products in the United States and Canada. Um, and I'm excited to join 4Pro and Monica's team working with Charles to evaluate the potential resources for the portfolio and how we compose that going forward over the time period and the goals that you've so generously and aggressively given for us to meet for your citizens and our citizens. Um, I'm inspired to join a CCA. Uh, the model itself is really powerful and I think it's one of the best ways that we have to democratize access to clean energy uh, in today's market and maybe even going forward. Um, and um, you know, I grew up in North Carolina where uh, nature is a big part of daily life and I've been enjoying since moving here in the past year the natural abundance of California as well. And it really reminds me of what we're fighting for and I uh, look forward to working with all of you to meet the aggressive goals that we've set to make the world a better place. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Eric. So I have a couple more updates. Uh, first, I uh, just wanted to lay out a bit of a timeline. Uh, the board goes through this um, each year we have in the last five years. Uh, we look at our budget that we hope you will, which will be provided to you for approval in September. But working backwards from that, we have a kickoff that Amrit Singh, our CFO, will start with a finance and administration committee meeting on Friday, followed by meeting with the executive committee at the end of May, and then we'll tee it up with the board in June. In July, we don't have any council meetings, and then in August, we'll be presenting you more of the numbers in the budget, and hopefully get that sorted out so that the, se the September meeting becomes a really boring meeting for the budget. You've seen it a number of times, it's all good. Now, in addition to that, we are also going to be bringing you our updated strategic focus areas. I've mentioned to you before that I think we'd like to keep the five strategic focus areas the same, but we have some sub bullets under each of the five focus areas that staff is looking at and we are updating to reflect current conditions and change conditions. Uh, in addition to that, also we have the CEO evaluation. So these things kind of go in lockstep oh, between now and September. So just, this is an update, just giving you an idea of the timeline, more for awareness than anything else. We're looking forward to working with you in committees and then in June and August and getting into the details. Um, I have two more items that I'd like to briefly uh, bring up. One is the Ninth Circuit's decision on the Berkeley gas ban. Uh, we'll follow that up with Benna Chang, a senior government relations uh, manager who will talk to you about a bill that we are concerned about. Uh, but first, let me bring, uh, ask, invite Zoe Elizabeth to give you an update on the Ninth Circuit decision. Great. <clears throat> Good evening. Um, most of you are shall be aware of this issue. We've been keeping you up to date as much as we can at the process um, over email. Um, but as a quick recap, on April 17th, the Federal Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals um, ruled against the city of Berkeley with regards to the city's ordinance prohibiting natural gas hookups for new construction. Um, the court held that the Federal Energy Policy and Conservation Act, EPCA, um, on appliance standards preempts the Berkeley ordinance. This has been an ongoing court case for a number of years. Um, this is the first time that a court has ruled that the, um, actually in, against Berkeley on this issue of preemption. Um, and the plaintiff in the case was the California Restaurant Association. So we are uh, monitoring the situation. We're conferring with other CCAs, the Building Decarbonization Coalition, um, other local jurisdictions. There's a lot of questions and unknowns. It's an evolving, an evolving situation, but we're committed to keeping you all um, apprised of the situation as more information comes out. 
Um, Berkeley has until May 31st to re request a rehearing, um, which would, this was heard by a panel of three judges on the Ninth Circuit. So they have until May 31st to request a rehearing in which it would go to uh, the full 11 district, um, all judges on that, on the district court. Um, so we, of course, always encourage each of you to consult with your um, city attorneys and make your own personal assessment of risks. Our staff is, of course, here to answer any questions and continue to provide resources as we find them. And, and probably even more valuable, our fabulous uh, legal counsel, Trisha Ortiz, is available to answer questions one-on-one, uh, -on -one, to consult with your city attorneys as well to um, provide any resources and thinking that you may need. Great, thank you. Let's see if we have any questions for Zoe while she's up here. Uh, Director Mikachuk? Yes, <clears throat> thank you. So this is a ban on natural gas going into new construction only, is that correct? The, yes, the court case was regarding- To overturn the ban of natural gas going into new construction. That's correct. Yep, it was the case against Berkeley saying that there was a federal rule that preempted, did not allow Berkeley to set this municipal ordinance that banned natural gas in new construction. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, any other questions or comments? I do not see any. I do not, yes, Director Mohan. Uh, is this unique to Berkeley or uh, are there other cities that uh, uh, ha that have the same uh, uh, requirements in their municipal court, mm -hmm. which, which could get overturned. Yep. So, um, well, of course, this particular case was unique to Berkeley. There are other cities across California that adopted very similar municipal ordinances um, to Berkeley's that would be affected by this decision. And those that have the most similar ordinances should, of course, consult directly with their city attorneys. And then most of our jurisdictions adopted um, different pathways or, uh, reach codes under Title 24. It's a different legal pathway. But because those um, reach codes often also involve natural gas, as uh, you know, good due diligence is important to consult with your city attorneys. Uh, any online? I don't see hands raised, so thank you very much. So. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Zoe. My last update, we have Benna Chang, who will be providing you information on AB 1373. Good evening, board members. Uh, Benna Chang, Senior Government Affairs Manager. And I'm here today really to give an update on our top legislative priority this year, which is the Governor's Budget Trailer Bill Proposal and AB 1373. As a quick reminder, the governor proposed through the budget process several energy policies earlier this year. Recently, Assemblymember Garcia, who is the chair of the Assembly Energy Committee, also introduced AB 1373. The bill contains the governor's budget trailer bill's policy ideas. And while there are a few key differences between the two proposals, they largely contain the same provisions. So I have listed here what those revisions are. Uh, we at SVCE and our trade association, Cal CCA, have very serious concerns with the proposals as written in the proposals right now. So the first key provision for both proposals is a central procurement authority, which would allow the CPUC to direct IOUs or the Department of Water Resources to centrally procure resources. Currently, the language in the proposals is very, very broad and will allow CPUC to order central procurement of basically any clean, diverse resources. So we have a concern with that kind of infringing on our ability to procure resources as well. Uh, secondly, the proposals really greatly expand CPUC authority over CCAs through the integrated resource planning process. We think this one infringes on CCA's board governance model um, and are very concerned with that. And then finally, the proposals um, introduce a concept of additional capacity payments. So this is on top of what the CPUC's resource adequacy penalties are. And on top of what CAISO uh, requires for backstop payments. Um, and we are concerned that this additional penalty doesn't actually change any behavior, but yet impacts affordability. 
So um, just wanted to give the board an update of where these two proposals are. So recently the Assembly Energy Committee passed AB 1373 and it's currently in the Assembly Appropriations Committee. We expect the bill to continue moving through the Assembly as a way for the Assembly members to have some input on the proposal. Uh, today, the Assembly Budget Subcommittee also held a hearing to talk about the governor's budget proposal. A lot of the Assembly members in the hearing brought up several concerns with the proposal that were very much in line with CalCCA's concerns. I'd say most of the conversation was around the central procurement entity and uh, a lot of criticism over how broad that is written right now. At the same time, the Senate will con consider the governor's budget trailer bill language through the budget process too. Well, this is kind of a messy process where you have two legislative vehicles and two separate but related conversations on the policy proposals. Next slide, please. So we're continuing to work very closely with CalCCA um, to figure out both the policy recommendations and the strategy in response to these two proposals. We are continuing to have lots of conversations with policymakers about the two proposals and our concerns. And I just really wanted to thank the members of the Legislative Ad Hoc Committee uh, who have volunteered to help us have these conversations with policymakers. We're currently in the scheduling process. We'll keep you all posted on when those meetings happen, but it's really important work and just thank you for your time. Happy to answer any questions. Great, thank you also to legislative uh, policy uh, subcommittee members. Uh, do we have any questions or comments for Benna? Do not see any here. Um, is that the end of your CEO? Re one more item. I have one more update. Uh, it's, these are invitations to events. We have the CalCCA annual meeting in San Diego next week. Um, there's still room if any of you want to come down. And there is an elected officials luncheon on Friday the 19th. So even if you want to come down just for that day, and meet with your peers of, from other CCAs. Um, I think that'll be a valuable experience. And of course, so please do connect with uh, Andrea uh, if you're interested. We have another event. Um, we have the opening of Casa Diablo 4 and Mammoth Lakes, and that's on June 9th, which is a Friday. We have two board members uh, board Member Chair Tyson and Board Member Mekicek, thank you very much for signing up. So you know, 11 more plus 13 alternates who may want to consider coming too. It's going to be great. Um, so if you're interested, please do connect with Andrea or myself after the meeting. And we'd love to sign you up. We're going to be leaving Thursday morning flight to Reno and then get to uh, the event uh, that evening and then it'll be on Friday. This is the first geothermal plant that's being built, that has been built in California in the last 30 years. And there's some new technology that is used in this that lowers emissions, and of course it is renewable. Thank you. That's the end of my report, Chair Tyson. Great. Thanks for that uh, wide-ranging and informative report. Do we have any questions or comments from board members? I do not see any. I do not see any online. Do we have any public comment on the CEO, any of those issues? I do not see any here. And online, we don't have any. Very good. Well, thank you. Let's move on to item number three then, to appoint a sixth member to the uh, our executive committee. And I do believe Andrea is going to be our speaker. It is. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good, evening, good evening, board directors. So, um, Earlier this evening, you approved item 1D, which was to approve a resolution to amend the language within our operating rules and regulations, which changes our executive committee membership to up to six members. So for the 2023 executive committee, we do have five. However, with the adoption of this amendment, we now have six seats on this committee. So we have one vacant seat if we would like to appoint somebody and if somebody is interested. And so this item is to um, appoint a sixth member if you so choose. A reminder that the charter for the executive committee is to provide advice um, to the board on policy, operational, and organizational matters. Uh, this group meets monthly. And the next meeting of this group will be Friday, May 26th, 10 a.m. at the SCCE office. That concludes the report. 
Great, thank you for that report. Let's just move straight on to, and if there are any public comment on this item. I will ask in the room, I do not see any uh, movement. And so online, I do not have no any public. So let's bring it to the uh, board. Do we have any discussion or comments? Um, Director Klein, are you turning on your microphone? Or? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, so yes, I, I'm actually interested in joining the executive board. Uh, if, if uh, I, and I'll leave it at that and, and then talk more later if you want. Great. I don't know how you want to go through the process. We'll go through it. Uh, we'll take comments, which I've just done. And then uh, I do believe, is there a motion that we have proposed, Director Mekachuk? Yes, <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion to appoint uh, member Mayor Larry Klein to the, as the sixth member of the executive committee to hold office until the term ends in 2024. I believe there's a one year term for uh, the executive committee members. Second. That was a second by Director Martinez Beltran. And is that all the discussion? In that case, let's have a roll call vote. Uh, actually, before oh, we I'm sorry. That, go ahead. I, I, would, I, would like to, I would like I to say a few words. Completely blew past that. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, so, so I'm, you know, I'm honored for for the um, uh, motion as far as being on the executive board. You know, for me, uh, it is important for, you know, and I, and when I was looking at the executive board earlier this year, I was not sure I'd be able to balance that work. But, but I, you know, in reconsidering, especially as the board has expanded, you know, I thought especially having Sunnyvale, and, and this is one of the things I've only been on the board really for the last year and a half now. And, you know, I, and I think having Sunnyvale there, you know, the, the, the executive offices or the, S, you know, Silicon Valley Clean Energy's offices are actually about two blocks away from my home. So, so as far as showing up to those meetings, I'll probably <laughs> be, it'll be the easiest for me of any of, the, uh, any of the executive team as far as that's concerned. But, but you know, I really have a lot of, you know, um, a, a lot of a, a lot of love for this organization. You know, I'm happy to see how it's grown. You know, this was it, this really came out of an effort from our climate action pla plan um, many years ago as low hanging fruit. You know, our food cycle program in Silicon Valley Clean Energy, and thanks to all the other cities that joined us uh, for this effort, and then more and more came on. And I do think that. You know, representing that from a Sunnyvale standpoint, as well as being uh, having the most uh, most residents that are part of this program, I think it's important for me to represent uh, on the executive committee. So, so I appreciate the the motion and the second, and I hope that um, I will be able to serve on our executive committee. Thank you. Well, thanks for putting yourself forward. I'd like to follow up those comments and say that I'm on several regional boards. And uh, Mayor Klein has uh, shown a lot of leadership on those, brings a lot of value to, to the board. I think he'll be extremely valuable to the executive committee. Um, and uh, I, I will welcome him in a moment. Well, we still have to vote though, right? <laughs> Let's not forget that. Let's go ahead. All right, thank you. Chair Tyson. Yes. Vice Chair Walia. Aye. Director Scozola. Aye. Mohan. Aye. Meadows. Aye. Rennie. Aye. Makachuk. Aye. Abby Koga. Aye. Klein. Aye. Hilton. Aye. Martinez Patron. Mm, just kidding. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That motion carries. All right. Very good. Thank you. And congratulations and welcome. Thank you. We appreciate it. Uh, we're going to return that love back mm -hmm. to you. Uh, let's move on to item number four, which is an update on the fiscal year 2022-23 digital, digital engagement initiatives um, program. And we have staff speaking. And that's Leslie. Okay, hello. hello. Good evening, directors and chair, vice chair. I'm Pamela Leonard. I'm the senior manager of communications at Silicon Valley Clean Energy. And this is Leslie. If you can introduce yourself. Hi. Uh, good evening, chair and board members. Um, I'm Leslie Mattering, and I'm the marketing specialist. So we survived Earth Month, and we're here to tell you about all the other outreach we do for customers online. 
And we're really looking forward to doing this. We like to provide an annual update on these efforts since it became a really important focus of ours, um, starting with work that began in 2019, creating something we call eHub, which I must say is the award-winning eHub, as you can see from this photo. Uh, this was a Center for Resource Solutions. They do an annual um, awards program so among utilities and CCAs and other power providers across the country, uh, eHub and the work we're doing to educate our customers about electrification was recognized as being a unique set of education offerings for customers. So the thinking with eHub is that we know from surveys we've done with our customers that they're very interested and motivated to do something about climate change. But where do you start? You see news about all these different technologies, and you recycle, and you buy local, and there's so much you can do. But with energy being our focus, we packaged up all this information uh, with our focus and our programs and our approach for decarbonization and electrification and put it into this one um, resource known as eHub. And the graphic on the right of the slide here really shows that with our small but mighty team, we've been having a really high impact in scaling our outreach to customers because with the click of one email send, we have 50,000 customers reading that message about going electric. So quick background, I'll spin through this for those of you who it may be new and others it may be a refresher. But when we first started putting together eHub and doing the RFP process, we thought about how we need to break through the noise, so much news out there, people are consuming so much information, uh, and so we need to inspire, increase awareness about thinking about energy in the first place and then leading them to our educational resources where they can learn about, okay, wow, I didn't realize that the emissions from a leaf blower were so impactful and you know maybe I can consider an electric one. And then of course, enabling action. So once you've been inspired, you've learned more, what do you do next? And that is how we came up with the structure of eHub and the customer journey where they learn about the clean electricity that they have or can harness if they wanna do solar and battery, for example, or driving electric and getting electric appliances at home. And each of those education buckets, so to speak, lead to our eHub resources. So the EV Assistant is a platform where customers can shop and compare different electric vehicles, learn about things like total cost of ownership, like, wow, I don't need oil changes with an electric vehicle. Didn't know that. Um, and have all the incentives in one place, since there's so many out there across the state or federal now. And uh, the Appliances Assistant is a marketplace where customers can purchase efficient electric products and we are able to push through promotions and rebates on, on certain things we want to promote. And the Solar and Battery Assistant is a service where customers can get an independent energy advisor sizing a system for their home and for their energy needs and then putting it out to bid to different installers and helping them evaluate very independently and see what makes sense for them, understand the different technology options. And there's a $1,000 panel upgrade um, rebate that we provide if customers need one if they go through this service. And each of these tools are run by third parties uh, that you know what we work with as our partner vendors. We also, back to the inspiration point, uh, currently are running this ad campaign called Don't Homecrastinate. This is the, the idea, the thinking here is uh, customers often find themselves in the situation of needing an emergency replacement for some large appliances like their water heater or uh, furnace or AC. And so we want them to start thinking about planning ahead. These appliances have an end of their useful life. They will fail. So think about planning ahead and therefore you can plan to do the job of going electric and learning about rebates and all of that. So for some fun, we do also have a quick video, which is one of our ads that is live right now. Are you delaying appliance upgrades, living in fear of the AC going out or a cold shower? you may be suffering from home crastination. Luckily, home crastination is treatable when you go electric. Go electric and you'll feel better in so many ways. 
Side effects of new appliances include fewer headaches and enhanced domestic bliss. Some people may experience more comfort and an urge to show off. Home crastination? No more when you go electric. Okay, glad to hear some chuckles because we watched that a lot. So we were like, <laughs> we grabbed in some team members from different departments. We're like, still funny, right? Okay. Um, so hopefully that catches people's attention. Uh, okay. So we've seen that our outreach efforts, so emails to customers, advertising, social media promotions, all of these uh, things that we've been doing have been driving a good number of traffic to uh, our website. And getting all these customers coming to our site and using these resources, we ran a, test, a user testing survey and user testing like test where they track and look for, hey, find rebates and look, see how people are really actually interacting with the site. We did this study last year, and from that we got a lot of really great information from average users uh, who aren't as close to the materials and got you know, great recommendations on how we can uh, really streamline and make it more customer facing, customer focused, uh, how can they find rebates and make that more front and center. And um, so those, implement, those updates were implemented this spring. And now to Leslie. Thank you, Pam. So I just wanted to share, we are growing. I'm going to do a lot of the numbers, so I hope you don't get bored of it. But we are growing. A lot of our customers are going to our website, whether they're a new user or a returning user. We're halfway through the fiscal year, and we're almost reaching our 250,000 unique user goal. And as you can see in the graph to the right, we have an increase in our returning users. and Sooner or later, it's going to be an increase in our unique users as well. And not only are customers going onto the website, they're staying on the website, and they're engaging with our contents and materials. The industry standard of how long a customer stays on a website is 54 seconds, and we are way above that. Customers are on our site for over two minutes, and that means they're reading the content, learning it, absorbing the information. And so our major driver for um, going onto our website is through our emails. And I just want to really emphasize the industry standard for an open rate for an email is 22%. But right now, currently, we are at 50% open rate. That means half our customers are opening our emails. And as you can see in the bar to the right, the open rate has been increasing. And you must wonder why. Why are customers opening our emails now? Well, one of the ways that tactics that we've been doing, whether it's through our eHub promotions or our program marketing emails, we have been sending more targeted emails that is simple and relevant. They include money in the subject line or a sense of urgency or valuable information. And another thing that we're inferring is the customers are recognizing us now. We've been here for multiple years and they're now having a positive association with us. And another step that we've been doing is having follow-up emails to unopen emails and next step information to open emails. So an example of it is right here is our highest open rate, which was 81%. And it was because we sent that follow-up next step email to our customers. And our highest click rate was sent to solar customers who were interested in learning about new, the new solar rooftop program. And so other ways that we are driving action and also driving education for our customers is through our online promotions. And these are done through the appliance assistant. And during these promotions, we have a discount for customers that they can claim um, a rebate on for any electric products that's eligible for, during the promotion. And lots of these promotions lead to a lot of unique visits, which you can see to the numbers on the right. In addition, it shows that customers are wanting electric products. And you can see how many rebates have been claimed during the three month spans. Currently, we have the yard care promotion where customers can get $50 off electric lawnmowers and leaf blowers. And we've added a new direct purchase feature, which I'll talk about um, in the later slides. Another way we are increasing education for our customers on electrification is through our sweepstakes. So the purpose of these sweepstakes is to have our customers really understand the benefits of going electric. So there's some questions on these sweepstakes such as, why, what is your favorite benefit of an induction cooktop? And they would pick it. Um, so these really 
create engagement for our customers in a ways of education and leading them to our e-hub, but also it's for them to just understand in a more engaging way about um, the offers and services they have available to them. Um, as Pam mentioned, we have the Solar Plus Battery Assistance, and this resource is very important uh, due to the fact that there are customers who are very interested in solar and, and battery storage. And as you can see in the graph, customers are very interested in these things. And we had a high interest rate uh, during one of our emails that we sent out during the springtime. So what's new on our eHub? Um, our newest thing is a uh, direct purchase on our appliance assistance, as I mentioned before. Um, what's great about this is there's an instant rebate for customers. They can automatically get a discount on a product on the appliance assistant and purchase directly on there. And this removes the step for the customer to have the rebate after the fact of the purchase. And the second new thing is the pre-owned EV catalog on the EV assistance. And this is a new feature that's added to the existing new EVs on our catalog. And this allows customers to compare costs, explore options, et cetera. And what's next? We have a lot of additional um, customer services that we're adding. And we are working with Electrum who is our vendor that we're, we work, currently work with for our Solar Plus Battery Assistance. And these are um, great services for our customers who are interested in installing heat pump water heaters and EV, EV chargers to their home. Okay. That concludes our presentation. And we're happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Wow, that was quite a bit. Uh, let's start with Director Scazzola. Hey, well, thank you, first of all, great presentation. Uh, and uh, I'd like to congratulate you guys on the award for eHub. That's really cool. Uh, glad to see so much public engagement with it. That's really promising numbers. I like it. Um, yeah, so I wanted to reference something from the CEO report that I read, which is grid shift. Uh, when I, ever since I first heard about it, I thought it was genius. The way I see it, uh, it's good for the grid, good for the wallet, and good for the planet. And uh, I can really see it becoming industry standard eventually, or something like it. Um, so my question to you guys, uh, what are your thoughts and plans uh, for the future in regards to uh, digital engagement and growth for GridShift? I can answer right now? Yeah, OK. Yeah, thank you for that question. I'm going to stand, actually, because I can't, <laughs> I can't see you. Uh, so. Um, so GridShift has been a really fun program to really stretch our marketing chops. Um, so shout out to Michaela Pippin and Rebecca Fang who collaboratively work across our programs team and our marketing team on this. And um, we have um, launched a new rebate that just, um, I think the first email promoting it just went out last week. There's a $250 EV charger rebate. So the grid shift program has been, um, so f I don't know if I need to get into too much background, but it allows for customers to um, have an app for free that they can download, uh, automatically sync their EV charging with when the grid is the cleanest and prices are the cheapest. And we have run various incentives, like a $50 incentive that has really spiked enrollments. We've done um, all kind, yeah, email marketing. We've done ads. We did a postcard mailer promoting it. So all sorts of different marketing tactics. But um, the, as I mentioned, the participation has been limited in the program so far to cars that are compatible or having a compatible smart charger. So the marketing we do is very targeted based off of information we have on customers um, that own the, you know, the compatible models of EVs and um, if they're on an EV rate. And so this $250 charger rebate really opens up the, the app to anyone who may not have a compatible vehicle because it is only eligible to those that don't already have a compatible vehicle. They can just get a compatible charger. So I think that's a really exciting opportunity. We're also getting ready to run ads at the Los Gatos and Gilroy DMVs. 
captive audience. So we figured, let's give that a shot. Um, and then we're going to be, again, continuing to do more direct mail, um, I'm sure maybe future incentives again. And customers can also earn bill credits uh, for participating in low carbon events or over the summer when we have flex alerts and those things, there's critical grid shift hours. Um, so those are the other things that we promote to incentivize customers to sign up. Great. Thank you very much. All right. Do we have any other comments here in the room? And I, I, I saw yours, uh, my Director Martinez Beltran. I uh, tell you what. Let's switch. Let's just mix it up. Let's go to Director Martinez Beltran. Then we'll go to Director Mekachuk. Thank you, Chair. I wanted to ask. Um, you talked about there was 138, 937 unique users and 12,891 returning users. Can you just talk a little bit about what differentiates those two? Unique users versus returning users? Do you want to oh, yeah. OK. Um, thank you for your question. Um, so unique users are new users onto our web page. So um, these are, yeah. And so returning users, folks who already go on our web page. Um, yeah. So the unique users are all new? Very first time. Yes. It's their yes. very first time. Yes, okay. very first time. Um, I do want to point out if a user cleared their cookies, they would be counted as a new user once more. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then can you also tell me, you know, what, what are you finding as far as the difference? Um, I really love what you've done with the eHub program and talking about how you can get your planner your rebate almost immediately right there. It just seems very convenient. So what are you seeing as far as the usage of those programs? Like what's the differential for people who are able to use a program where they get it pretty immediately versus having to wait for the rebate and get that later? Uh, that's a, oh, is that yeah. okay? Oh. Yeah. That's a great question actually. Since um, the Yard Care promotion is our first pilot um, of having that direct purchase compared to an after the fact rebate, um, mm -hmm. I can't give you my answer just yet, but right now what I'm seeing is people are getting it now. I think at first um, folks were more wanting to do the after the fact uh, purchase rebate, but after the most recent email, I'm seeing an increase in people wanting instant rebates. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. All right. Any other comment? Yeah, Director Mekachuk. Uh, great presentation, thank you. Um, it's interesting because Garish some time ago said he's got to focus on where you get the most leverage and obviously through the digital work you get a tremendous amount of leverage. Um, so it's great to see it starting to come to fruition now. So I have a, a couple of comments, observations. First of all, I saw one of those ads in my uh, Facebook feed, I think. Um, so that was good. And I was, I was smiling as, as I saw it. So that's a compliment. Um, and then when you start to get into the higher dollar value items, like for heat pump water heater rebates and that, um, you don't have to solve it now, but I would recommend that you consider uh, referral codes so that you can start to see where those purchases are coming from and, mm -hmm. and somehow tracing them back. So if you were to say, you know, here's a referral code, at least you can have some way of understanding where you are getting those quote sales from. Uh, again, great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great, thank you. I don't see any other hands raised. I got to say my conscience is a little better on the home crastination front. I had a contractor come <laughs> do an evaluation on the uh, uh, house uh, uh, heat pump uh, heater just last week. With that, do we have any public? Oh, we do. Here. I was just going to follow that up because it's funny. Today, they finished installing my heat pump furnace. OK. All right. And let's, let's hope the weather is such that you don't need to run it now for quite some time. Uh, do we have any public comment? Yes, Mr. Carney, come on up. So I recently uh, watched a TED Talk, a TEDx Talk from Los Altos Hills by Steve Schmidt, who formerly was an alternate director, now married to an alternate director from Los Altos Hills. And Steve talked about his journey um, 
reducing his carbon footprint from 39 tons to one ton. And he had to do a lot of things, and it took a number of years for him to do that. But I bring that up because individuals reducing their carbon footprint is the way that SVCE will achieve its goal of bending the carbon curve. So 10 years ago, there were a lot of carbon calculators floating around. Uh, if you were interested in the environment, it was hard to avoid getting an email saying, here's a new carbon calculator, put in your data and you'll find out what your carbon footprint is and how it compares to the average American or the average Northern Californian. Those calculators are still out there at various levels of complexity, uh, covering, you know, some cover just the kinds of, you know, gas use, natural gas use, gasoline, electricity. Others cover food, air travel, uh, purchasing of things. But I don't believe our eHub has one. And it's my belief that one of the things that will motivate someone who's sort of lukewarm about being good to the planet is discovering that they are in the top quarter or top 10%. And if we think about whose behavior we most want to influence, it's not the frugal ones, not the greenest of the green, it's the brownest of the brown. And so I think our eHub would do a very good job helping people understand whether they're in the top 10% of polluters or in the top 10% of climate champions. Um, using something fairly simple and straightforward, uh, not one of the highly complex ones, because frankly, um, only a few of the actions that can be taken are within our sphere of control. I know my friends who are into the uh, vegetarian movement, the no beef, no lamb movement, can tell a great story about why it is so important to change our diet but I don't think that's quite in focus for SVCE. But I do think there should be a carbon calculator that helps drive people toward the decision to buy an EV, to buy a heat pump water heater, uh, and maybe take other efficiency actions that don't necessarily involve converting, but simply using less of what they already consume. Thank you. Thank you. Very good comments. I, I, it resonates with me, the efficiency as well as the conversion. Uh, do we have any other? public comments. And by the way, I was there for Steve Schmidt's uh, TED Talk. And if you know Steve, it's no surprise. It was quite entertaining. <laughs> um, any other public comments? Any online? OK. Very good. With that, let's close out that item. And uh, we're going to uh, move on to board member announcements and any direction on future agenda items. Do you have something? Did you have something? Yes. Go ahead, Director, uh, I, don't, I was a little late, so I mean, this may have already been announced, but if not, um, our Cities Association of Santa Clara County is having our, an, we're changing the name to an annual dinner on June 15th. Um, and we thank you to SVCE, our sponsor, along with a joint venture, Silicon Valley. Our theme is going to be on sustainability, and um, it'll be it should be fun. We're going to have demonstrations on induction cooking, um, as well as dinner served by um, an all electric kitchen, and um, some uh, guest speakers. Uh, and so it'll be 6 p.m. Um, at the Los Altos Community Center, which is also now all electric. Um, and so you should all be receiving invitations shortly, but please mark your calendars for that date and please encourage your um, colleagues to join us as well. We want to just show how you can be all electric and have good food. <laughs> Thanks. Great. Thank you. That does sound fun. And no, we hadn't heard it yet. Okay, great. <laughs> Do we have any other announcements? I don't see any hands raised and I don't see any here. So I think we'll move on then. So um, our next item here is a closed session. And you can see on the agenda that we have two items to discuss. And now I'm going to open it up to public comment on those closed session items. Do we have any public speakers? I do not see any here. And we don't have any online. So with that, we are now going to retire to closed session. And uh, we will reconvene an open session when we're done. But if we don't see you at the end of that, I hope you have a, a very nice evening. And thanks for joining us on uh, the night of a Warriors game whose score I haven't looked at yet. <laughs> I will go ahead and, and reconvene open session and announce that we have uh, nothing to report from closed session.
And with that, uh, I'm adjourning this meeting and hope you have a lovely rest of your evening.